One of the things that Boruto to Tupu Vortex Chapter 9 has really seen in it for a lot of fans is the narrative that when it comes to hating on Boruto, nobody is potentially a bigger hater of Boruto than Kawaki. His hate for Boruto is surpassed only by the obvious hate that Kendra has for Drake, which both cases need to be studied if we're being honest. But to be serious though, one of the common things I've seen regarding Kawaki's actions is the fact that in the face of such an overwhelming threat to Konoha, Kawaki is still choosing to double down on his pride and his view of Boruto solely as an enemy and not even consider a short-lived truce with Boruto to take down such a clear and obvious threat which is why in today's newest Naruto Explain video I wanted to weigh in on both why Kawaki might be making a mistake but also why his stance is while it is as infuriating as it is to Boruto fans it is completely in character and it might even be justified when you take the emotion out of the entire situation. So I think most of us will pretty much agree that Kawaki Kawaki, due to his insane pride and his paranoia, is making a pretty big mistake in how he's handled his issues with Boruto and the awakened Shinju that have attacked the village in the form of Juren Hidari. The threat that is currently facing the village, it is a mighty one, one that Kawaki knows firsthand is beyond anything he can currently handle. He tried to confront Juren Hidari, but when the confrontation started, Jura just casually walks out with his hands in his pocket and then he hits Kawaki with the two-piece combo no biscuit and had the boy knocked unconscious with delta screaming kawaki's name he did the honorable thing by going to confront the two intruders and one might even argue that he's moved past what the 48 laws of power refers to when it says to avoid walking in the shoes of a great man because you will most likely never be able to live up to those expectations because as time goes on memories tend to get glorified past events in a way get remembered that isn't completely accurate and you find yourself competing against a memory of someone in the past and how their actions or their story made someone feel at the time. You can't win against time and nostalgia. When Kawaki first began to take advantage of omnipotence, one could make the argument that he was merely keeping up appearances because due to the memories of Boruto and Kawaki being switched in the minds of everyone on the planet, there were people who believed that Kawaki was the one who was the kid who helped save the village twice, was the grandson of the fourth Hokage, and he was the son of the seventh Hokage, two legendary heroes of the Hidden Leaf Village. If he did anything except for act in the best interest of the village, there would be people raising their eyebrows at the lack of action and the overabundance of inaction by Kawaki because of the burden of familial bonds and expectations that Boruto has had to shoulder for such a long period of time, which played a huge role in Boruto even wanting to become a shinobi. And by taking Boruto's life and walking in his shoes, Kawaki has to face those same things. His obsession with Naruto, one could make the argument that he is only making it a point to defend the village not because he himself has grown attached to the village but more so to ensure that naruto will return to a village that he left behind out of respect that he has for naruto though given that kawaki is a consequentialist at heart it cannot be ruled out that he might take the stance that the end result justifies the actions taken to get there if it comes to his desire to protect naruto it's that line of thinking that has the guy looking at boruto when he arrives back in the village and he's thinking to himself he cannot let the opportunity pass him by when it comes to having Boruto eliminated. Hence, he went out of his way to verbalize to the sensory unit that Boruto was right there at the scene where the Jonin were murdered and then to verbally say Boruto's friends were the ones who were those awakened Shinju and that Boruto was working with them because the sensory unit was listening to Kawaki at that point in time and he needed to erase all the goodwill that Boruto built up by helping Helping save the village from Code's invasion early on, and by helping save the village from Code's invasion, I mean single-handedly saving the village. The other thing is, is that despite Kawaki feeling the need to take out Boruto over taking on the two awakened Shinju, despite him literally getting beaten unconscious by one of them only a few moments earlier prior to the encounter with Boruto, logically speaking, I get the source behind this overconfidence, especially from a narrative perspective and his uber focus on Boruto in the moment over wanting to rush to the target in the Shinju that are running through the village. The last time he fought Boruto, he was clearly stronger than Boruto. It was outright stated that he was the strongest person in the village before Damon got there, and that included Naruto, Cope Harder. And he believed himself that he was strong enough to take on Code without limiters, and 
he'd have a really good gauge for how strong code is because he was living with damon the last three years damon has a good way to gauge how strong kawaki is in comparison to code and amato had already figured out what happened on omnipotence so everything that was required in terms of keeping up the maintenance on his ninja tech body to keep it running at peak efficiency amato would also know how strong code is without limiters so if we look at kawaki's mind from that perspective the idea that boruto beat code it wouldn't be something that deters him especially if he's already of the belief for right or for wrong that at the end of part one up until now he and boruto basically grew at a similar increase rate for example again for right or for wrong if at the end of boruto naruto next generation kawaki was a theoretical 10 and boruto was a theoretical 8 and kawaki believed that they grew at a similar pace then kawaki say he went from a 10 to 15 he would believe that boruto went from an 8 to 13 even if that line of thinking is completely arrogant and doesn't take into account that some people who start from behind the start line in a race have the capacity to run the race even harder to make up for the advantage that you have at the start of the race and eventually overtake you but as one of my old mentors once said those who are blessed with privilege oftentimes don't know that they have it and don't realize how hard someone who started with less needs to work in order to stand next to you as an equal or even get ahead of you kawaki would fall victim here to that line of thinking which is ironic given he is pretending to be naruto's son and is ignorant to that part of naruto's character that boruto's begun to show showing that boruto does understand naruto's struggle in naruto's story in particular just like boruto told naruto i want to learn about your story and sasuke tells him if you're going to save your father you're going to have to endure the same things that naruto did this is part of that enduring naruto he wasn't the brightest bulb at the academy naruto was an absolute dunce he was eating crayons he was eating wax paper he couldn't read the expiration date on a milk carton he probably couldn't even spell his name without sounding it out and he lacked so many of the basic fundamentals a stuff that he should have learned at the academy that Jiraiya he spent most of the two and a half years training to teach him stuff he should have already known basically taking remedial courses on how to be a ninja but Naruto when he got all those basics down when he put in all that work combined with that insane and stubborn drive to work harder than anyone else because of how prideful Naruto was as a character he was able to close the gap and surpass genius people like Sasuke over time who were born more gifted than him and born with more advantages than him. Boruto isn't so much of a genius of hard work than he is a natural genius who also, as we've seen on occasions, isn't above taking the challenge of hard work. Even if it's not something he isn't used to doing, he's still willing to get his hands dirty. We've seen it in real time with Boruto's growth and Miski. He's the one who suspected what it was that happened. Boruto through three years managed to improve to a level that even Kawaki hadn't even considered possible. And we see it in Delta's reaction when Boruto one shots Kawaki and then he asks him, hey bro, do you even train? And then Delta's the one who follows up and says, how much do you train? Kawaki, due to his pride, won't allow himself to even consider the remote possibility of what Sarda was suggesting in the Hokage office in chapter four. Basically that they needed to team up with Boruto to eliminate code and work with Boruto to see if he even knew why people were being turned into trees and what the cure for that might be. She, what she suggested, it was logical, but the problem with people who are clouded by their emotion, in particular, the emotion of an obsession, is that they can oftentimes be, and oftentimes are, wildly illogical, even if it's to their own detriment. Which in the case with Kawaki, he was so dead set on killing Boruto, removing one item from his checklist of people who needed to be eliminated before he can unseal Naruto. That wasn't something that he didn't see as a mistake that he was making, or even worse, he might see it's a mistake. He might acknowledge it's a mistake, but he just doesn't care. Killing Boruto, something he believed was well within his power to do, again, for right or for wrong, something that he believed that he was in control of, as far as he was concerned that was the right choice in his mind because you worry about what you can control and you find a way to overcome seemingly impossible obstacles when you're forced to do it again it is a true consequentialist mindset which makes them dangerous there's something deeper driving this decision to want boruto dead even at the expense of teaming up with boruto to stop jura and it might be the betrayal he felt when 
He asked Boruto, was Momoshiki there? And Boruto lied to him, which prompted him to leave and go seal Naruto. And you could twist it with the whole shonen trope that a character, they can't get beyond the betrayal of a friend. They can't get beyond the betrayal of someone they view like a brother. And it's super cliche if that's the decision that the narrator chooses to make. However, again, cliches exist for a reason because they've been tried and tested for decades now and they tend to work. Kawaki teaming up with Borto, working with Sarada and Miski to take on those Shinju is something that you would think is the logical choice. But I would say from a storytelling perspective, when crafting a series of conflicts and using a combination of internal and external conflicts, where you play the internal and external conflicts off each other to craft the conflict that pushes the story forward. Having Kawaki do the frustrating thing in this moment gives you more to benefit from narratively if we're being honest here. Kawaki in the manga, he's shown, yeah, he can work with people. He can work as part of a team. We saw that in the Boro fight, but we've also seen that he has lone wolf tendencies that he does not set aside unless it's something that directly pertains to Nard so that he can accept. And that it takes time for him to, to reel in those tendencies, especially when he believes that he might be the one that's in the right. You could use this whole scenario to build towards Kawaki eventually learning and fully embracing what it means to be part of a team, which that makes that moment where Naruto eventually gets unsealed feel that much more earned because it shows that Kawaki has risen above some of his tragic character flaws and he's evolved. Newsflash is part of a character arc. However, before we get to that moment, there's going to be a painful transition. It might be fast and it might be something that takes a while. Like the way it took us weeks to move from saying no Diddy to K Dot having people saying no Drizzy or no Drake. Kawaki might be forced to take a similar path before he can truly accept working with Boruto, but the end result will definitely be worth it. Like it's worth clicking this link to my new My Hero Academia video on the screen here.